Let's get cast. And we um, left last week with a cliffhanger oh. on the judiciary okay. and the weaponization of it. And I kind of want to utilize your political science major. Mm. I want to lay something out and then I want you doing the talking on this. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. All right. Because, okay. What we got going on right now with Trump, the majority of folks know. They're paying attention. Um, you and I have been in different courtrooms, different court. Frankly, uh, you're in federal court. I'm in state court, sometimes federal court, um, but not an immigration federal court. So that's a very specific, right. narrow court. And I've seen weaponization and I'll explain what I've seen so I can kind of get my arms around this, this, this headline that you bring up often headlines, 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 this headline is weapons, weaponization of the judiciary, weaponization of the courts. Okay. Well, I've seen this firsthand wherein let's, let's use a bureau in Maricopa County. And I'm not going to make many friends, but they don't have many friends anyway. So I'm pretty sure if they're amongst the tens of folks that are listening to us. That you're safe. Yeah, I'm pretty safe, but maybe not. I don't know. But some years ago, now I will do this disclaimer. It has gotten better, which I am shocked to say that before I even get into it. It has gotten a little bit better. Okay. Some years ago. There was a bureau chief, and that means a boss of a particular bureau um, that charges crimes of a particular nature. This bureau was called vehicular. Okay, So all aggravated DUIs, all felony DUIs fall into this bureau. And this bureau was known because of their supervisor and the culture within the bureau. They had what we call... Um, procedures. They're not legal. They're not in the law book. They don't follow the law. They're their procedures. They're made up. They're to handle a whole bulk of cases that fit into this little tiny narrow scope. Okay. I'm sure you've experienced this on some level. The problem with this particular bureau is it was diabolical. So you were seeing very good people that could contribute to society spending an extra couple of years in prison because people that are impaired that drive have killed people. And we've represented that. That doesn't happen very often. It doesn't excuse it, but every case should be handled equitably. Yeah. And individually, why else do we have prosecutors? All right. So I've considered vehicular or at least it did, they've gotten somewhat better, cleaned up the mess to a degree, but I heard this particular individual's back, so we'll see how that goes. That said, it's interesting to deal with that knowledge and to know you're in a real tough spot, mainly because of where you're at. Um, I respect the fact that they see really, really ugly cases. We've handled really, really ugly cases. Um, I respect that. But what I don't respect is everything's handled the same as though this particular person killed somebody, as though driving on the wrong side of the road when they got pulled over did end in a catastrophic um, accident and or, you know, death and or maim and or huge victims and, you know, terrible outcome. Right. I get that. But let's say that you're on Grand Avenue at one o'clock in the morning. You've had a few, so you shouldn't be behind the wheel. So no condoning drinking and driving. And Grand Avenue is kind of a kittywampus street, kind of a weird, especially where the, where one of the freeways meets. And so going the right way and the wrong way, you could be stone cold sober and screw that up. And I've had multiple clients get on that going the wrong way. Of course, the multiple, their clients, because they're impaired um, and figured out they're going the wrong way really quick and did what any sober person does that 150 times a night. And now instead of a first time DUI, 
in municipal court for a misdemeanor, they're facing a felony. And this is not a law. Okay, this is a procedure. And so I've seen the judiciary and I've seen Lady Justice peek her little eyeball out a little too often um, just by seeing some of these things. Um, I don't deal with that right now, currently. Um, now I'm busy supporting supporting the attorneys here at the Arizona firm in that particular fight. And yeah, when it's vehicular, yeah, our red flags go right on up. Um, I, to be fair, I've had some really remarkable results, but they've been hard fought. And because you're fighting, you're swimming upstream against not the law, the policy policy. So now we're watching Trump and he, he's a convicted felon and he's kind of owning that, which is interesting. He's kind of flipping that around and he's owning it and floating on that particular weird bubble. But anybody with half a brain can look past or beyond the headlines and look at some of these charges and kind of go, what? We've got Martha Stewart that went behind the wall for, I think it was five years, Fed Penn. Something, yeah, mul at least multiple years. Yeah, it was multiple years for insider trading for like 40, 50 grand, if I remember right. It was, I, I remember once upon a time, I think it was a fairly nominal no, amount was. to her anyway, to other people, that's a significant sum. Um, but you've got Nancy Pelosi and, 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 and Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell and, and who's that uh, Jack wagon up there in Utah that was a Senator. I don't think he is anymore. He ran Mike for president. Lee. No, uh, he ran for Romney. Romney. Yeah. He had dirt bag Romney. No offense to all the people that like that. I don't like him at all, but you get these guys making jillions of dollars with the information floating around over there. It's just palpable. Okay. And yet she goes to prison doing the same exact thing. Who's not going to, oh, oh yeah, I'll sell that stock then. Fine. Thanks for the app, uh, the heads up. I, it doesn't feel that dirty to me. I understand that that should be illegal, but okay, if we're, if it's justice for all, are we just making a, a statement from time to time, but we make, we give a pass, we give a pass. So if Trump is guilty, is a convicted felon now, why is Obama not? And why is Clinton not? And why is Bush, why is W not? And why is crap? I mean, we could even, I, I don't even want to, it's sacrilege to say but Reagan, not Bush senior. not. Why did they not go after Nixon? Why did Trump choose not to go after Obama, which there were plenty of things right there in front of God and country. So what does the weaponization of the judiciary do, in your opinion, to our country? So maybe I'll ask you a question to just clarify where you want me to go with this. Define for me what you feel like that means weaponization of a judiciary or just weaponization in general. I feel like if in the event, okay, the example I was going to go with, um, or not example, the experience I was going to go with is last week we asked Bailey and this week we're, we're blessed with your, your, your son, uh, introduce yourself for the, for the world. Speak loud. Cause it only picks up on these mics. Or you could just sit in front of that mic right there and make it hot. He's young. He'll probably for, figure it out in 28 reason, seconds. Though, that mic doesn't still seem like it picks up very good. But it's a number. Th it's number three plug in, so you got to unmute it. He'll figure it. He's young. It has nothing to do with the mic, though. It's the plug in. It's the. It's that. It's that. Yeah. It's number three. And you got to. Yeah. So talk in it and see if it goes. Does it bump up a little bit? So you're gonna want to unmute it. You can just talk loud. It's all good. Yeah. I don't know. Just give us a roll. So last week, 
we asked Bailey, so now we're going to ask your son. So introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Caden. I'm uh, Jesse's son. <laughs> Jesse <laughs> Westover, <laughs> Westover Law Firm. Yep. Uh, I'm going to talk from back here loudly because I don't think my mic's picking up. <laughs> He's awesome. Okay, so if you were to be charged with a crime, and would you feel... Um, would you feel like it was going to, you were going to be fairly treated by the court system? So, so going into it, if you would, Hey, I, you got charged with trespassing or something like that. Would you feel like, Oh, I'm cool because I feel like no matter what, I'm going to be in good shape because I love the judicial system and I'm, it's going to be fair. So I, that's what he's asking me more than anything else. Yeah. Oh, shoot. That's okay. So, uh, I mean, I assume it would be like, you know, treating everyone fairly, but we are all human and we all have biases and all that. So, I mean, like, it can never really be totally, totally fair towards everyone. And no matter how hard we try to pick, like, a totally unbiased judge or lawyers or whoever, there's always going to be some sort of bias that they just unconsciously have. But perfect world, I feel like I would be going in there and uh, expect them to be treated equally to everyone else. I think that's the key, right? He says in a perfect world. Right, in a perfect world and expect to. Yeah, and expect the expectations and good. Good for him for for having some, I want somewhat people of to a feel like yeah, that. Yeah, that's yeah. absolutely. So, so yeah, I guess back to your to your question of of the weaponization of of the judicial system. So I, I think that for me, yeah, let's, let's de de define those terms. So the judicial system in, in general, if I was to look at whether it's being weaponized or not, I'm going to look at, okay, what is the law? Well, number one is right. what is the law? What are we looking at? Are the, do these charges match what the law says? Right. So that's number one. Number two is, is there a, a historical precedent set because we're talking about individualized cases here and, and especially you know the, the reason this is even making a headline is because we've got politicians or major celebrities or whatever it is like right. I mean, we can even throw a p diddy situation or whatever sure. we're doing right now puffy. that's in the, yeah puffy that's in the that's in the news so so for particularly trump so i would look at then historical precedent of okay the rule of law matches maybe or at least it's got a good shot at it but historically, have we gone after somebody for this type of crime? So you got to look at that. And then thirdly, are we going after this person in this position after or, or over the, and you mentioned people, presidents, former presidents right. that potentially could fit under rule of law charges that weren't charged. And so you're going to look at, okay, is this traditionally something in this type of office that we ignore or that we prosecute or whatever else. And then if all those things just aren't matching up, then I think you've got an argument that we've right. weaponized and we politicized yeah. a crime or a, a set of facts or whatever else. So that's kind of how So I I'm look looking, at it. I like that you're breaking this down. So I'm looking at it like this. So this is the less sexy of the things that are going on right now. And so let's see if we can't get um, the bigger one of us in this room. He, he's six foot five. Big boy, I am the smallest fella. <laughs> Holy crap. All right, so we've got two presidents right now. One previous president, one current. And both have been caught with classified documentations. Okay, both have classified docs, theoretically, allegedly. Okay, the charges look to me to be equal as and far as what You could even what. throw in former presidential candidate Clinton that's the within the, the last few role. years, different, right. the same, case. same issues. Yeah. Same issue. And you could throw in all of them. Yeah. Really? Yeah. We could throw in Obama. We could throw in, we could throw in Bush. We could throw it. These guys, okay. Probably have, you know, some what, stationary they shouldn't have. Okay. Whatever the case might be, we have these two right now. One was president and has presidential um, declassification, which is not is a little bit confusing there. Yeah, the authority. The other one was not president. Okay, so we've got documents in Biden's possession when he was not president. Vice president ain't president, and neither senator. 
And so, okay. But let's just, for the sake of this argument, say we have two cases. Which one has been charged? No, absolutely. And, and, and so, that's your argument, right? For, right. And so when people come in here and think, and they have for the last 20 plus years and in your office as well, probably to a lesser degree, but scared of the system for sure. And scared of our pile back in the day and scared of the process. And depending on what's going on, you get to see the fear too. Sure. But what we have here is a lean and then a distrust by the populace. And that's where I feel like, okay, your political science major may have focused a little bit heavier on, okay, our populace, our, the citizenry, um, us, all of us are kind of in a Pollyanna to think that we're going to get a fair shake. People don't come in here thinking that they're looking for a bulldog that will attack city hall, that will burn it down, that will do this, will do that. They're, they're looking for that, which rarely do they need that. They need hard work. Yes. And a good preparation and good team behind them. Absolute bulldog and that, this, whatever, and they're not going to get a fair shake. And this is happening. Oh, okay. Um, what does that do as this goes on? I mean, we're watching it happen in front of us with headlines, headlines, headlines. You watch Fox, it's this. You watch CNN, it's this. You watch The View, it's this. You watch Bill O'Reilly, it's that. You watch, you know, The Blaze, it's this. If you watch MSNBC, it's that. And and and, and everybody's starting to kind of come to a, I, I think, almost a numb. So the consequence is this. So one of my favorite founding fathers, Hamilton, he, we're going to get deep back in the days. He once quoted, and I'm going to butcher it, but it's basically liberty is safe as long as the judiciary is independent. The minute the judiciary then bega begins to cohort or join with, I think was his actually words, with one of the other branches of government, then liberty ceases to exist. Right. And so it's that's what it is. It's right. an assault on freedom. Right. It's an assault on liberty because when the, the political board and we talked about this last week a little bit when the political body, which is our to me, it is the biggest check and balance. Right. President and Congress, and even though those are different right. branches, congressional and, and executive branch, they've always been depending on who's in power, they're going to lean a certain direction, sure. right? We've always kind of known that. That's yeah. been pretty traditional for a long time. But we add that third body to keep that check in balance more than anything else. And I think that's been the the thing that I've always had faith as a political science major or just as a, a populace, as a citizen of the populace, that our judicial system is going to keep us in check, right? That's going to be the thing that as the political sides begin to clash, we've got this balance and I think that's the danger when you talk about if, if we're truly and look, everybody's going to have an argument as to, as to whether this is actually happening. And, and it is. And, and I say that it is and it is not completely there. It's be it's drawing its party line right now because it's one president that's being indicted and it's not another. But it's the politic or the weaponization of the judicial system is across party lines. I mean, Trump was quoted several times during his campaign of lock Hillary up. Right. That right. was. He wanted to go after right. criminally after right. uh, 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 his, you know, candidate his that opponent. was an opponent. Yeah. And uh, we've seen, we know that President Trump, you know, had Sessions, who was his attorney general, that wasn't doing some of these criminal prosecutions that President Trump wanted against his opponent, or at least protecting the ones that they were coming after. And he hires Bill Barr and Bill Barr, uh, if anybody knows the history there. Right. It's just just facts. Unfortunately, Bill Barr decides to hire special counsels and do whatever else to protect some of these people that were also being investigated on, on Trump's campaign. Right. So that was used as a defense mechanism, but it was right. still a weaponization right. of the judicial system, whether it's affirmatively going after somebody or defending somebody that mm -hmm. somebody else is coming after that's weaponizing the judicial so system. So now where does it stop? So that's the thing is, is that now it's progressively gotten, 
it, it you know the, i guess the, to the defense of the republicans while they shouted for it it never came to fruition necessarily yeah. and now we've seen it come to fruition and i don't know if that would have happened trump stays in office potentially we get there anyway so i don't know that I'm going to defend completely Trump on this right. issue. Uh, we're just talking about the right. actual. We're just talking about vague this thing or, or the is, actual is the evil, general, right. you know, concern that we're weaponizing the judicial system. And I think, yeah, as Hamilton put it, then our liberties are going to be going to be quite or going to be put in jeopardy here yeah. because we've got to be careful what we say and we've got to again rule of law. Maybe one thing, and the one thing that I want to be clear on this Trump thing is, is that, and I don't think anybody has the answer to this. Is we haven't seen the evidence really, right? We don't know whether this, the rule of law, my first little threshold of does the rule of law fit the facts, I don't know. Right. Uh, it might not. Right. And so it might have failed on my first, you know, little this prong. Be, this particular one in New York should never have been brought. So and, the, and, that, and then that read, goes to the second yeah, one, right? right? What right. was historically this something right. that even should have happened? Right. So, so this one shouldn't even have been brought. So that's that. As far as the other cases going on, I, I don't know. But we have more information. At least we have. Yeah, the, the Georgia one. Jury. The Georgia one scares me a little bit more because yeah. I think that's actually. You know, and we're talking about. I mean, the accusation is is basically you know President Trump saying find me votes. Right. That that totally comes against our political I, system. Agreed. Right. Then we're then we're into Venezuela and we're into these places where right. where your tr the political party is having well, way too much influence. Trump is really hard to like um, for a. I've noticed for a, an. an Somebody that's analytical and somebody that is a lawyer typically finds themselves yeah. in this category. Correct. He's hard to like. My page liked him immediately and I didn't, just for the record. Um, I'll vote for him now. Yeah, and I'm kind of in the same. I'm conservative and so yeah, I mean, it's I'm, my I'm, choice right now, I'll, unfortunately. Right, here we are. I don't dislike the noise he makes. I don't dislike the change that likely he will not finish, but he's begun. Um, there was too many dirty, too many dirty corners in Washington that needed to be at least, he was the flashlight that, that shined it. He's the one that said, well, you know, because I used it, I did this. I know exactly what this is. Yeah. And I enjoyed that candor thinking, oh snap. Okay. All right. But, on a second go, would he hire better? Would he surround himself better? Would he do better? I, I would like to see that because it appeared his first presidency was basically defending uh, whispers and ghosts. And that's the sad part about our political right. situation that we're in, right? It's right. that's why it's so hard to get things done. And that's exactly. I mean, there's there's a very prevalent element of this weaponization of the judicial system that. But yeah, are we spending our, and we've talked, I mean, years before it was, do we spend four years campaigning for the next election? And right. so we're not getting anything done. And now we're spending four years defending everything we do right. and not getting anything done. Right. And so, yeah, we've got an additional element to not get anything done. Well, then the last three years now, we have had very little in front of, very little obstacles in front of the current president and what the Sam's getting done. Yeah. And that's. I, and, and so. I get the people out there saying, I want to see Nancy Action. Pelosi behind bars. I want to see this guy <laughs> behind bars. Frankly, I'd like to see everybody dismissed in it just, just for no reason whatsoever and just elect people that are going to be there for certain term limits and make the special interest wonder who to, who to use now. Yeah, I think, I think that, and That'd be that great. that's as my political science major, the, the term limits part helps to to wash out some of this uh, term un limits is so key. Unfortunate, you know? Yeah. Do I want, we both Dirty love the, the pendulum room. yeah, and we like it right in the middle. Okay. We, we, you and I are too, are really, really too aligned there because we like that right in the middle. And for me, um, it's kind of a necessary, very intriguing. I never saw it coming this way tool to land in the middle and just start kind of cleaning up the bureaucracy that we've, that we've found ourselves beneath. Um, but this judicial system as Hamilton 
perfectly said, we need it. And we need it not to have judges donating one way or the other. We need prosecutors not being AI. AI now exists. But AI existed 20 years ago when I began with those policies and procedures that that vehicular crimes were doing. A mindless drone could, could handle these cases. They were not thinking for themselves. They were not evaluating the cases for themselves. They were not advocating for the state and they're hired to, why hire a lawyer then? They're not advocating for the state. And so when you got this, and I know you've seen this in your world and you can't, you got to dance here a little, but you've seen this in your world where you have your true believers. You have, you got to have those that are just toe the liners. You've got those that are a little bit more. Okay. Let's look at this. Um, Judges and prosecutors alike. Um, I got nobody that's thinking in, you know, all of those years of practicing, not a whole lot of thinking going on. Why? Because they've got a jury that's going to convict. I love your innocence, but you've got a jury that's going to convict just because you got stripes on or you were charged with something. Oftentimes, that is what we have. Every once in a while, we slip one by and it's a big celebration. But for the most part, the cards are stacked against those who are charged with the trespass. That the cards are stacked against you because this police officer said you did it. This particular witness said you did it. You're saying I didn't know or I didn't, whatever. You may not have been trespassing at all. But are you going to get a fair shake? Or are you going to freak out and say, I'm going to take a diversion program that's available Just to me. So that's I don't even have to take the chance. So yeah. I don't have to take that coin toss at, 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 at a jury. Do, do you know what's crazy on my end? Um, so we'll revert back to where my expertise is on where, you know, obviously my career is with immigration law. We don't have an independent judiciary in immigration, which is the only, it's the big argument that these chief judges have come to the executive branch of Congress saying we need an independent judicial system for immigration. Because for us, immigration department for the judges is under the DOJ, right? Department of Justice. But what that means is, is these immigration judges, even if you're the top immigration judge, which like we compare it to another court, if you're a Supreme Court justice, that's not the final word. So we have attorney generals that are, a, that are in charge of the Department of Justice that can come and independently take a case on appeal and make their own decisions on case. They can also set policy from that office that the judges then have to follow that doesn't come from precedent of a circuit court or the BIA, which is our Board of Immigration Appeals. Right. So we're even worse as far as where the political landscape can come into immigration. We've made this, yeah, we've had this conversation several times before as to how ebb and flow it is for me as to who's in office. But that doesn't even just mean enforcement policy. That means judicial policy is changed where it should be written as a rule of law that, and, and it, literally a case can come out and and Jeff Sessions was was big on this taking his own cases and setting precedent and some of those precedents like there was a case Silva Trevino that's since been thrown out after Sessions left that changed the entire landscape of immigration just determined who was a mandatory detention who was convicted of a crime involving moral turpitude, which had been established through case law for years, 100 right. years, threw it out the window. And we had to change everything we did. And that was not a judicial decision. It was a DOJ decision from the attorney general, who is an attorney, but is not a judge, did not hear the actual testimony from the case, the dirt underneath the literally fingernails. just got the appellate paperwork and changed the entire landscape of immigration. How do you... How do you prepare your clients in general? It's And it's so fluid. Sometimes I can tell them that it's going to be fine. And it turns out when they get their trial, it's not fine. And And again, it had nothing to do with judicial oversight. And so the judges have clamored. And and look, there was a big 
and it needed to be done. The immigration court system needed an overhaul of how many judges. It, the backlog was so long that that President Trump came in and hired a bunch new judge, a bunch of new judges. That was great. Unfortunately, that pe what people didn't know was that under those new hirings came new mandates of how quick cases needed to be decided and what authority the judges had to, to actually hear a case or not. During President Obama's administration, there was a case law, judiciary case law, that came out that allowed judges to determine on their own merit whether they felt like there was a priority for a case in, in, in court, and especially if the department. So it would be just similar to you if, if a judge in the in a DUI court, you know, had the power, if the prosecutor said, hey, I want to dismiss this case, the judge just says, sure, I have that power to dismiss right. the case, no charges, whatever. Or if the judge in your department decides that the prosecutor on whatever evidentiary reasons does not have a probable reason and grants a summary mo motion to dismiss, summarily dismisses the case because the prosecutor has no reasonable or possibility of, of proceeding. You've seen these all the times. So that power exists in the court, in the judicial system. It existed at one point for the judges to determine this. It was completely taken away with these mandates that no longer do you have this authority, and it was just completely taken away. Just black, white. DOJ dude. took it away, and then, and it was a, a case that was taken up by the AG, not by circuit courts or anything like right. that. And then you've got that power taken away. So I had several judges. In fact, through two of the three judges that were lifers in Phoenix, I had had them for 15 years. And then the amount of cases they were having to hear a day and make decisions on them quickly where they could take their time and analyze the law before it. And then the you know new administration comes on and says, this needs to be done today. The decision's made today, and you need to hear four cases a day instead of two trials a day, and like, Jeez. and set, and they set a set number of like I think it was like seven hundred cases needed to be adjudicated during the year, which with all the you, you just know that the judicial system's not set up that way. There's right. procedural things that cause motions to continue. Right. There's evidentiary concerns. There's whatever. Um, the judges felt so much pressure to that I was getting overturned on things that were legitimate reasons for continuations or me winning a case were completely being thrown out because mm. they were so worried about these mandates. Two of the three judges just quit. Within yeah. six months of, of these new mandates said, I'm no longer, I, I have no control over my own courtroom. And so I'm not going to stick around. Now they were in their 60s and probably had their pensions and whatever else. But I, one of the judges I was pretty close with and and said that he was going to make it a life. I mean, he they were going to drag him out in a body bag is what he told me. And within six months, he was done. He's gone. Done. So my world's even worse on that weaponization. I feel like we're going that way. And, and, it, and it happens on both administrations. Right. Like what Trump did then got completely wiped out right. in many ways by President Biden. And, right. and whether that's beneficial to me or not, it depends on the circumstance. Like I tell people all the time, look, immigration work is easier now. But it takes triple the amount of time, right? Because what pr Trump did do was effective, at least in some things. Maybe not in the judiciary side of things, sure. but a lot on the administration side of things. We right. got things done quickly, and right. that's a credit to him. Biden's slow as molasses right now right. in his administration. So people are just dangling around. They can't even get their cards. Yeah, work permits are taking three years. years. Yeah, yeah, stupid for, production type yeah. of fabrication stuff. It's crazy. So what happens, in my opinion, when Hamilton speaks? What happens? So this is where I think everything is going to a degree. It, it's this way that you just perfectly illustrated the way immigration process is the way the criminal process or the way the courts are going nowadays um, is there's too many moving parts back and forth, back and forth, wherein it should just be neutral, right? Neutral, right down the road. That's what and, we count on our judicial system we, to do. And we need that. And so what happens in my opinion when it's too wishy-washy is whether you're on one side, let, let's say you're an anti-Trumper, okay, or you've got the derangements, I as bad as people can get. Let's say you're that or not. You just don't like Trump. That's fine. Or you're a big time Trumper, okay? Either thing, either person, not respecting one bit the judiciary, not respecting the courts, not respecting the laws, and that doesn't have anything to do with which side of the aisle you're on. At some point, there's a snap factor, in my opinion, 
wherein what we have is a judge can say whatever the Sam he wants to say. Then, then your, your clients, I, I've represented people like this, just walk out and just, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because right now, politically, we're not exactly um, <laughs> cops right now. We're not exactly best friends with the executive portion. It, nobody's, do we not see what we're monkeying with? What we're monkeying with our entire way of life. Yeah, because what not the whole purpose when you're thinking about the political system? And I know this is conjecture of, 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 of visions of grandeur, but when you look at, you know, when I studied it and when I was excited about, and I studied on the political science domestically, obviously, but I, I was a minor in international relations, right? Yeah. And so I got the, to study how other countries are set up. Right. And dude, I'm proud of what we have. Sure. I, I'm proud of the system we set up. I, I would rather be here than anywhere else. And I want to make that clear. But yeah, I am too. heavily disappointed in the trend that that we've now come out to be. Because just as you're saying, whether it be judiciary, which is the one that we've been holding on to for dear life, or congressional or legislative or or, or executive or whatever branch it is. Nobody trusts anything like my my son aptly said. I would like right. to be able to trust who's in power, but they have so much information at their hands right now that that we don't. All everybody's deep dark secrets are out there, yep. and we we're losing trust in the moral fabric of the United States. Right. And the sad part is, unfortunately, is that they're still even if the moral fabric is gone on both Biden and Trump, they both have some moral arguments that could be sure people don't care anymore, right? And I don't know what that is—a delusional or or, or dilution. Just, of, I, I just feel like the, you, of the whole given, party system is just. Given, I don't yeah. care anymore. We've all like, been given a pin, and we don't know where to draw the line. Yeah, and and it, exactly, and it used to be very clear. Right. We just oh that person is literally, and this is going to be you know for the tens of people that are listening to this. Oh, they're Catholic. They're off the yeah, right. No, I and mean, it, it, that's it was, the way it yeah, used to exactly. be, and now it's like. I don't know where to draw. And, and the, is that back to, and we've had this on totally, it's not even a political con, but we've had podcasts on this. Is that the, the American culture losing its identity? Is that an identity crisis that we're doing? And I don't mean just our culture, but just identity right now. So fluid as to what people that, that because we don't have an identity, because we can't figure out who we are, whether it be as an American people or as an individual, that that line is blurry now. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, you're, 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 Caden's going to know this. I think. Well, uh, shout out to your high school. What high school did you go to? Desert Hills. Okay. Shout out to them. Let's see if you had a similar experience as uh, my boys that are roughly your age. They, I, I, they didn't come home and tell me about it. It wasn't that. I overheard them just talking about this thing called a furry. I didn't know what the Sam hell a furry was. What in the Sam's a furry? Would you like to explain what a furry might be? They, um, they have silly animal characters that they dress up as pretty much. And that's like the general thing. Like every day they dress up as this particular animal character. I got it's it. Like, it's like cosplay. Do you know what cosplay is? Uh, no. It's when you, um, so say you have like a, a video game you really like, right? Yeah. And you you dress up as one of the characters. It's like Halloween, but it, it's just playing dress up. Really. Got so it. Like you put a lot of effort and time into like really selling the, the costume or whatever. Okay. Um, they, it's kind of like that. Too. This is, and this could be worn on any day that ends in Y, not, not just uh, October 31st, correct? And so they call these guys, these people, these individuals, furries, and okay, that's what it is. And these people apparently identify with this particular thing they're dressing up as. Um, and I'm like, what in the hell is happening in our schools right now? What is happening today? Okay, give me the pen. I'm going to draw a line right here with furry. I'm going to draw that line. I don't want my kids to be around, if, if you can identify as that, where is this going? And I, and I think that's the, the issue of, and, and I think 
you know, Caden may have a different perspective of his generation. I, I think there's, and where I think you're totally right, is anything, whether furry or, you know, I, my niece's high school is allowing litter boxes in the female bathroom because one's a cat. And that's not a furry thing. That's literally identified right. as, a, as a cat, as an animal. Um, you know, other oh, identity man. things that we've talked about or, or just what I, what I don't like is I don't mind if, if this is something that interests you and you're like, ah, oh, this is a group of people that's cool. And, 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 and they share similar interests or whatever else. And every once in a while, you know, that's what I don't like. And I think this is where you're at going is, is that when it starts to mess with who you are, right? Like when you start then justifying decisions or thoughts or whatever else, because somehow you've forgotten that you are a 18 year old male or 17 year old female mm -hmm. that now you're making your decisions based on the fact that you're a 19 year old bear or right. whatever it is. And right. I don't mean that in a, in a make fun of way. I, I really mean that that is dangerous when yeah. you lose who you are. And so it's, it can be fun in games. It can be innocent when it starts to mess with you understanding who you are as an individual that's where that line for me is. is yeah, I, is I think when it starts to jack up, when it, look, where does it stop? Where does it end? It's a bad direction. I don't like where this is going. I don't like the litter box in the girly room. I don't like where it's going. When it starts to create, see, it's called mental illness. And an illness is meant to be temporary. And it's treated. not a disease. It's a mental illness. It's meant to be temporary or treatable. Okay. We are retarding the treatment. Where does this end? It doesn't. It just keeps going and going and going. It's the first idiot that said no child left behind. Guess what? Yeah, there are going to be people left behind. It's life. Yeah. It's and it's an unfortunate piece of life. But guess what? Those people that were left behind don't seem to be doing too poorly. When I was when I was going to school with them, they seem to be doing pretty daggum good to my to me. Yeah, and, and and these were children left behind. They education were, system based on that thought. What, 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 what's that? I mean, they're doing great. I don't know. This no. What, who came up with this? No child left behind. Of course, it's a good slogan. No one wants a child to be left behind, but it's just not practical. It's not even remotely possible. There are going to be those that achieve differently than others. Okay. There's just a whole bunch of that whole differences that we have. You coach basketball and a whole lot of, and, and I would have sold my soul to be six foot five. Um, cheaply, mind you, I would have sold it cheaply to be six foot five. Um, every kid on your team is different, has a different skill set. And it, it, you're sitting there as the maestro trying to maximize their skill sets, you know, trying to get them to blend to where they're a symphony, they're a harmony. That's what life is supposed to be. Yeah. And yeah, no, absolutely. But is that the reason that I'm able to do that is because I've convinced that group of eight, 12 kids that there is a central purpose. To what they're doing right and that's is, is that what we just lost? went there that might be where we're lost the central purpose i just feel uh, like it's confused it's it's that line is blurry it's we it's are vague it's we are american and we are proud we to need be, to redefine need what to that re, yeah what that is what that, what that looks that like is. being a good neighbor it's working hard nose to the grindstone and those good old-fashioned keep your hands busy uh, you know, treat others like you want to be treated. This doesn't seem to be complicated. Because we've confused what it means, in my opinion, liberty. That word I brought up from Alexander Hamilton has been confused as to what that means. And people think that now means we protect and no matter what your idea or opinion is, it's that's the, the liberty to express it and convince others, whether it be rational or not, or whether it, whatever we, that's, that's what our idea of liberty is not the central purpose of what we're trying to accomplish as a country, but rather to make sure each individual is heard and, right. 
and then the, 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 what, what our purpose is becomes confused because each individual right now has, is being raised in a way and is yeah. being influenced by so many different sources. Yeah, let's have our 10 people. Well, I think we have at least 12. <laughs> I made that joke, but I, I've seen our views. We've got thousands at some times. Oh, yeah. We got our shorts get good. It's because we're good looking, <laughs> I think. But anyway, look, have our scores of people out there. I think it's called DM. I think that's what that's called. DM I want message. I want com- messages. I want comments. What does it mean to be free to everybody out there? What does it mean? What does freedom mean to you? Yeah, and I'm interested to hear. I'm I'm open to what people's thoughts are because obviously we're in a, in a we're close to the same generation, and and I'm sure there's people that watch this they're not, and I'd, I'd be interested to see what that. And and it's okay if it's if it's changed. Say what you yeah. think it is. What is being taught to you right now? What is your what right. is your conviction? What is your what is yeah. freedom? Because freedom when I was growing up is different than Caden. Probably it's different now. Freedom when I was growing, you, you didn't. Okay, we had. MASH was on the TV back then. Oh, I know. I just dated myself pretty good. But MASH is a great so. show. Yeah. Anyway, you had Klinger. Okay? And Klinger was cross-dressing. He was one of the nurses. He was one of the, he was one of the doctors. Whatever he was. Corporal Klinger was just trying to get kicked out. And Potter knew it, or, you know, the, the boss knew it. And the captain, the colonel, colonel knew it, and he just kind of Ignored it. Um, I'll be danged if he's going to give him the satisfaction of getting kicking him out, for kicking him that. out. Right? I'll be danged. So, to me, you've got there was a line wherein we kind of kept each other in check. Um, we weren't. Um, there was that "don't ask, don't tell" that went on for a long time, and I don't really find that to be problematic. Like that particular way, don't ask, don't tell. It's not demeaning. It's let's, you know, we're your, here for this business, purpose. Our purpose is That's different. your business. We're here for this purpose. That's your business. And this, as long as your business doesn't interfere with yeah, our purpose. As long as it's implemented in the right way and we're yeah, not it, it, discriminating. It's like, or don't ask, else. don't yeah. tell, and fine. Good, good to go. And it's kind of the way I, I don't, I don't know why we're celebrating things that are not necessarily celebratory they're not uh, having a catnip or whatever uh, in a girl's bathroom isn't something to be celebrated oh you're identifying with a cat we're retarding again i'm going to say it again we're slowing down the process of a mental illness being addressed okay we don't just go and throw kitty litter and do it just to bend at every whim because where does it stop that's the problem is you've got obviously outside influences look when a when a child decides to do that children are going to do their things right and, sure and sometimes th- the problem is is when you have a support system or these voices outside that tell you that that that's okay yeah. I mean, and, and, and there's a, there's a way to go about it. Um, especially if you're dealing with a mental illness or some, an identity, sure. you're just trying to find who you are. Well, help them find who they are. Right. Do it in the right way. Right. Be patient with them. I don't know that you go the step of providing, the lit- I'm not, I, it's not even, I don't know. I don't agree with providing yeah. a litter box. I, I don't agree with the, condoning it. Because you set that child up for disaster. Right. You, you set them up for failure. You can't be a cat your whole life. It's right. just the way it's not life fly. is. It's not going to work. And, and so, you can't succeed in life. And so you deal with that the entire life. You set them up for failure. Caden, what are you? 18, 19? 18. 18 years old. Okay. So we had Jesse, my Jesse, um, Westover, Westover Law Firm. And we have Jesse Hogle from the Arizona firm. And he's your age. And he said that, yeah, they were identifying. We talked about furries a little bit on our pod. And um, other types of things like um, binary, non-binary, transgenders, and things like that that are a dull rumblings here in our in our school system. Not a lot, but he said in theater he saw a lot of that, wherein people were lonely or people were looking for a group to belong to. And that's what it is. And, it's belonging, right? And they went toward that because they're looking for that connection. And, and maybe they were ostracized or or discriminated so against th- in then another they group. Join that group, sure. And then there's another group that they might join, or this group that this other person might join. Looking and for love said, and acceptance. And the problem I is, is they're looking that. for love. And, and I couldn't believe my boy said this. 
They're looking for love in all the wrong places. Now, I'm cleaning that up and putting Kenny Rogers on it. He said because they just chew them up and spit them out. Those groups implode every time, 10 out of 10 times, no matter what. There's more cat fighting, infighting, and all sorts of fighting within those particular special interest groups. And it's like the first... Probably because they're still trying to figure out who they are, right. and, and that's fluid. And, right, and, and it's all fluid now. And back in the and day... you have predators so you in those before, groups as well. And, yeah. yeah. So you said it before, where are we going? That's what you said like 10 minutes ago. Like, where are we going? What does that mean to our scores of listeners? What does freedom mean? Where are we going? What what's is... The, what's the purpose? Yeah, what's it all about? Hit That's, us with that and let's we'll talk about it next time. All right.